But, but anyway, let's move along. One thing that is not strange is the realities related to COVID-19. Rising uh, number of, of cases, rising fatalities have, re have required operational adjustments in businesses. It's now a major concern for all levels of business during this time of pandemic, which has been with us since March when we had our first positive case, March the 12th. It's going to be with us for some time. Keeping staff and customers safe while trying to preserve jobs can prove challenging during this evolving time of a pandemic with all the other challenges economically that there might be. Well, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce met with the Ministry of Health and other members in the business sector to develop more strategies to deal with COVID-19. And uh, we are joined now by Gabriel Farrier, CEO of uh, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I believe their Champions of Business Awards is still very much uh, on. They, they haven't called that off. Unlike the, the National Awards, they have everything in place uh, for that. Mr. Farrier, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Fazir. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, good to have you with us. Well, we see what is happening now with the pandemic, with the rising number of infections, with the rising number of fatalities. Give us your perspective as to how the business sector is coping, how you're strategizing in dealing with this challenge. Uh, uh, the first thing I want to do, I was listening to the uh, Minister Dia Singh uh, before, and I must tell you that I have the utmost respect for the, for the team at the Ministry of Health. Um, the level of collaboration and engagement that they have with the with the population, but with the private sector in terms of in terms of providing not just advice but seeking advice. Um, you know, we started off early. I actually participated in the opening uh, reopening committee, and you know, I've heard all the talk, and we are where we are. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not going to, I don't think we should be sitting down here identifying why and how. I mean, yes, we need to, we need to learn from our mistakes, but we need to take the right actions. And, I, you know, I sit in a group with a number of um, business groups and in, in the main, people are doing the right thing. Right? People, are, people are taking preemptive action to manage this, um, this spread. And I want, I want to commend the Ministry of Health and the business community for, for being proactive in managing this. And, and when we talk about managing this, and, and the, the, the concern must be from the business sector, given all of the challenges even before COVID-19, we had the shutdown that lasted for a couple of months for, for, for non-essentials. It, it would have been even longer. Some have not been able to recover from that. Are you fearful uh, from a business point of view as to the consequences if we would have to go back in some sort of managed shutdown. Now we understand the government has made it clear they don't want to go there. The Prime Minister fully appreciates the potential consequences of that. But from a business point of view, how do you balance that issue of saving lives, protecting lives and keeping the economy going to also save lives and protect lives? Um, again, I, I listened to the minister speak before I came on. I listened to the prime minister very, very, very carefully at the, at the last uh, press conference. And I must tell you that I think there's a different mindset. First, the first thing is I don't believe that the government is going to take uh, unreasonable action in terms of closing businesses. And I heard um, Minister Al Singh say that again today. The world is living with COVID-19. We, we have to create, and that's why, you know, the chamber actually issued a release on the, I think the 28th of July, saying we support legislation for wearing a mask. We got a lot of licks for it, but I think we need to recognize that the world, maybe for the rest of 2021, is going to be living in an environment where we have to be our brother's keeper. And again, I heard the prime minister say, we in this together. And we need to make sure that we do, we are responsible. So my concern, I, I must tell you, my concern is in spite of opening, confidence is a major, major issue. Business confidence, consumer confidence is a major issue. The unknown is making it very difficult for businesses and I'm scared. At one time, I think we were almost 100,000 people uh, unemployed, you know, early on. I'm scared because businesses are coming back, but demand is still very, very soft. 
And, and because of that situation, and because we have this, the, the issue now where we have these rising numbers and, and, and greater levels of concern than, than have, might have been the case previously, uh, and, and later on in, in the course of our discussion, uh, we hope to touch on your, your budget expectations as well. Uh, are, you, are you fearful? I mean, even if the minister uh, was, was very guarded when I was asking him, are you worried that it's going to get worse before it gets better in terms of cases and fatalities? From a business side of things, are you fearful that the, the, the business circumstances, the economic circumstances, will get worse before it gets better? It's an unknown. So the first thing, yes, I am concerned. And yes, that is why so many businesses are doing the right thing in terms of protecting their staff and protecting their customers. And that is why we are so supportive of ensuring that as a people, we do the right thing and we and we and we are responsible in the way we act. So if we do that, you know, Fazi, there's a term called a predictable outcome. If we do nothing, the cases will rise, businesses will close. The role of management, and again, the role of management and our interface with the Ministry of Health, the role of management is to know that yes, more people could get sick, a lot more, more businesses will close or could close a lot more. What do we as managers, as citizens do to take preemptive action to stop that. And that is where you and me and the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Trade, and you know, we've had meetings with the, with the Minister of Trade already. How, what do we do to take preemptive action so that businesses don't close, so that not as many people get sick? And I am, I am so happy to, for the interface we're having with the Ministry of Health because they are looking preemptively I mean, in March, the Ministry of Health called a group of businesses together to talk about ensuring supplies of health, of, um, of, of pharmaceuticals, to talk about, so they didn't wait till we had a problem, in fact, I think it was before March, to make sure we identified alternate solutions, and that is what we as a people have to do. We're going to take a break uh, at, at this time, uh, Mr. Faria, but we have a lot of issues that we still uh, want to discuss, not just in relation to COVID-19, but budget expectations as well, because we're heading into that period also of that dialogue. So we'll have more with uh, the Chamber CEO, Gabriel Faria, after the break. 718 in Trinidad and Tobago as we continue our dialogue uh, with uh, the CEO of uh, the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, uh, Gabriel Farri. And indeed, we are dissecting uh, the numbers. That's our tagline uh, for our build-up uh, to budget discussions uh, with the budget presentation expected from the finance minister. We haven't gotten a date as yet, but we're heading into the, to the end of this period, into the next period, 2020-2021. But before we get into that properly with uh, Mr. Farri, I just need to ask you that continuing with the, the COVID-19 discussion, Mr. Faria, the, the issue of the reopening of businesses, because I know that's a challenge, especially for those businesses which involve a lot of people close together. And uh, whether you talk about cinemas, whether you talk about restaurants, whether you talk about other uh, businesses that require people to be together in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an enclosed space, that has to be a major challenge. How do you see that r working out? It is a risk. Um, very early on, we created a grid, um, which we which we shared with the Ministry of Health, which showed what we call either low risk of of um, of COVID, low risk of spread, and high um, ability to mitigate. So, an example would be a casino, or um, or a cinema, where people have to sit in specific seats, or in front of a casino where you sit in um, in front of slot machines. So they are high risk areas, but they also, or higher risk, but they also have the ability to mitigate the risk by, I, I mean, I was, when I was going to church, when church was open, they told you, you have to sit in this seat and in that seat and make sure you left six, seat, six feet between. So we see certain businesses that are closed, such as restaurants. Um, I went out to a restaurant in Woodbrook One uh, when it was open and you were able to sit um, they left they left uh, empty tables between the tables. So there are businesses that are closed, and we believe that some of those businesses have the capacity to mitigate the risk. Um, cinemas, casinos, restaurants. Um, I, I, you know, in discussions with Ministry of Health, we recognize that 
when you talk about a group and you say there, there are 3,000 bars, I mean, you go, 3,000 bars, but you don't have a commitment from each of those institutions or organizations, it makes it difficult. In the case of cinemas, there are basically eight cinemas in Trinidad. So it's easy to get compliance in an area like that. Casinos, again, you know, there, there's, it, it's easier to get uh, compliance in there. And there is ability to get compliance in restaurants and in bars, but it has to be done by, by business, not, not by let's open every single restaurant and, you, and we hope you will follow. So we are recommending to the ministry that they look at, at, at putting individual compliance where people will, through their regional health organizations or through the um, public health inspectors, put in, um, make some sort of commitment in terms of a customer pledge. And we're working with the Beverage Alliance, the Trinidad Bigger Beverage Alliance, to look at how we can how we can support that. So we are hopeful. I heard the Prime Minister speak, um, and we are hopeful that on I think it's the 12th or 13th of September. They will allow businesses, some businesses, and again, a lot depends on the on the on the number of people. But I can tell you that in talking to a number of these businesses, they have the level of mitigation policies in place to manage the spread. And I'm hopeful because you know, Fazir, as you said, there are businesses that are closed, and I am very nervous as to the their ability to live out another 28 days or another or another 60 days as the case may be indeed well as we head deeper into september no doubt that will be be, be up for consideration and indeed even more so uh, expectations for for the budget presentation and in, in the time that we have available to the bottom of the hour uh, as ceo of uh, of the chamber what what are your hopes and expectations from from the budget presentation <laughs> I'm actually glad you answered, you asked that. So there, there are two or three things. In fact, yesterday on the Express, we actually um, put out a column on our budget recommendations for, for the 2021 financial year. Um, early in, in August, so I think the end of uh, July, we actually put out a statement, an advocacy statement on some of the things we'd like to see. And I was so happy when I read the manifesto. You know, a, a manifesto is like a proposal for marriage. You know, um, this is what I will do if you marry me. Right. And when I read the manifesto, I must say I was I was very, very. I was elated. I was elated because so much that we have put into our advocacy statement that we put in all the papers in at the end of July was in there. So many of our recommendations was there. I mean, the first thing, for you, you know, I've been fighting a battle on VAT refunds. And I mean, improving cash flow for businesses through timely release of VAT refunds will significant, and we are going to systematically clear off all outstanding VAT refunds in bold. So I'm, I'm seeing so many promises there, and I am hopeful, you know, that, that this is not just um, a proposal for marriage, but it's a commitment. I'm, I'm hopeful that this manifesto will be made life in the, um, in the budget. We, uh, we recognize that unless we get this economy started, we are in a very, very tenuous position. So um, I don't know if you, I, I, I read your manifesto, I don't know if anyone else has, but I'm hoping that that really sets the tone for um, the budget. You know, because your private sector employs 400,000 people. If you don't have a thriving private sector, you can't have a thriving economy. And, and we employ 35,000, you know, I'm sorry, 35,000 businesses, 400,000. If we don't, if, if business doesn't succeed, and again, I, I listened to the prime minister, and he said, we're in it together. If we don't work together, we cannot succeed. And I am, I am hopeful, I'm hopeful that based on where we are, I think COVID-19 has created an opportunity for us to really work collaboratively to do the right thing for this country. And I'm hopeful that the, that the Minister of Finance, like we have had engagement with the Minister of Trade and the Minister of, um, of Health, will work collaboratively, the government will work collaboratively for the betterment of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, at, at the risk, Mr. Safari, of getting you in trouble for any public utterances once again, uh, the, the issue would be, as with, with any marriage proposal situation, people might say things, promise the world, 
uh, before, before the time of matrimony. And once they get the ring on that finger, it's a different story. So, uh, I mean, we, we might make light of it, but the, from, as you said, from the point of view of VAT refunds, which have been owed for years to businesses, uh, other issues, how, how much does your expectation, uh, your, your hope, sorry, how much does your hope square with your expectation given the realities of the economy as it stands because the government might argue they really don't have much wiggle room at the moment well i i am hopeful that the manifesto which i i, I think i heard the minister of finance say that he he was um, instrumental in penning is a promise is a proposal for marriage I am hopeful that he will that they will they will honor their obligations as put out we you know we have to recognize that if that if we don't do this, you know, I think when Barbados opened, the first thing they did immediately was offer a one-year visa. Come and live in Barbados. You know, in Tobago, and I'm going to give you an example of something, and it shows the difference in mindset. In Tobago, a foreigner cannot buy a property. You can buy a property in Trinidad, but you can't through the land license order, right? That, that land license order has hurt Tobago so much, and I know Diana has, has, has sat on some of these programs. It's, it, it's destroyed, it's been, it's, been, it's been part of the reason that Tobago's economy is where it is. And, but Barbados is encouraging people to come and live and stay for a year, but Tobago is saying, we don't want your investment. I mean, there are actually zones that you can invest in. That was part of the law, part of the, part of the way it was set up. So if we don't do the right thing, Businesses, businesses have an obligation to their shareholders. One Caribbean media is a public company. If, if Trinidad and Tobago, the, the labor, business, and the government do not work together here, then capital is mobile. People will have to go where they are welcome. I am confident and hopeful, I'm cautiously optimistic that based on where we are today at this cliff, at this cliff, if we don't take the right course up this cliff, we will fall off it. And I am confident, based on, based on the way the Prime Minister is speaking, that he is going to provide the guidance to create the collaboration needed for us to turn around this economy. And I, are you satisfied that all the stakeholders, business included, recognize the gravity of the situation right now, the unprecedented nature, to the extent that people are required to make sacrifices that they would not normally be expected to make. Does the business sector recognize that? I can tell you for sure the business sector recognizes it. I looked at I look at those here results. So I think your leadership, your management team, and your in most organizations, and I heard I heard Norman Sabga say this is an event that has not happened in this lifetime. It's how, how critical businesses business recognizes that. And if we don't come together and do the right thing, and that's keeping people safe, uh, investing wisely, and if government doesn't create the environment, you know the VAT refund situation. Uh, uh, three years ago, we raised it with six billion dollars amongst owed to. Uh, um, to businesses for, for, for supplies was probably another five billion dollars. Um, when we look at when we look at this three hundred million dollar loan facility, what will help to create confidence is a more transparency. How many of those has been approved? Because we need we need to big businesses can survive. You know the woman making doubles, the man, the person doing um, um, crab crab in, um, in 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 on the beach in Tobago. The person making um, sweets at the airport, they all contribute to the economy. They all add GDP to this economy. You know, Fazir, I know it's almost time, but I want you to recognize that when you look at, at the energy sector, we all recognize that we cannot live dependent on one leg. We have to build our other leg. And I'm confident business knows it. I can tell you labor recognizes it. I, I have had discussions with many um, labor leaders, and they recognize we have to work together. And, and I must tell you, some of the ministers I've spoken to, all the ministers I have spoken to, recognize it. Indeed. Um, Mr. Faria, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us this morning with the many different challenges uh, for business, not just COVID-19, which is a huge one, but the general state of the economy as well. Thanks very much for taking the time this morning. Thank you very much for seeing. Gabriel Fire, CEO of uh, the Trent Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce. And indeed, it's always interesting when we talk about uh, budget discussions because even now, 
So every so often somebody will walk into the store and say, what about the free LED bulb that Imbot promised in the last, uh, in the last budget? So, well, we, we ain't see it yet. So, uh, again, and, and that gives you a classic example of budget, budget promises, and, and, and whether or not it actually becomes real implementation.